All right, with that, everybody, hello. I am Kelsey from the Arcane Library. I am joined by four people who I deeply appreciate, and we're going to be playing some Shadow Dark RPG today to demonstrate a little bit of gameplay. Um, and I think I want to give everybody a chance to introduce themselves. Um, let us begin with that hammer on screen. Could you mind introducing yourself? Why, hello there. Uh, my name is Doc. It's not actually my name, but it's the name I go by. Um, I am a friend of Kelsey. I moderate her Discord channel. Um, I also need to throw two shout outs here. The first is uh, my fantastic background, uh, which is the deity symbol of the best god ever named Memnon. Um, that was drawn by my sibling Moss, so shout out to Moss. Um, the character I'm going to play today uh, is named Wicket. Um, was created by someone in our Discord named Newbie C4. Um, so shout out to both of them, uh, and I'll pass it down the line. All right, let's jump to David. I'm spoiling everyone's names in advance. Uh, hi, I'm David, uh, and uh, I will be playing Ernesto de Valera, who uh, I've used as an NPC in my own campaigns. Uh, he's a wizard, he's a merchant, uh, and he's kind of like a cross between a Khajiit and Varric from The Legend of Korra, if you've seen that. Cool. All right. All right, let's jump over. I'm just zigzagging up my own screen. So, Jesse, do you want to just give a brief word of who you are? Yes, I am Jesse. I am Kelsey's wife. I uh, will be playing Grumpy Billows. He is a halfling fighter. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> halfling fighter. Um, he's a worried little guy, uh, great personality, um, amateur baker, uh, <laughs> good guy to have around. So that's that's Grumpy Billows. <laughs> Go Grumpy! All right, and then finally we have Lauren. My, 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 could you be possibly referring to myself? Hello, my name is Lauren, also known as Disastrous Golf or Lord's Toughmet. I'm the creator of a soul blight setting and the professional parasite in Kelsey's sight. And I'm worming my way to success through her Shadow Dark stuff. Uh, I'll be playing and rapping the Goblin Race today in the form of Bazarak, ex-goblin union worker, ex-miner, uh, banished from the Eastern Goblin Mines after a little bit of a labor dispute happened there. Terrible time for everyone else. I'll be your fighter. I'll be your main meat shield today. That's me. That's what I'm gonna do. Excellent. We have a good cast here. Um, we have various levels of um, people who've played tons of Shadow Dark and those who haven't. Um, Jesse, in particular, you have not a huge history of playtesting because you work on the other side of the game with me, the operations and production side. So I think that everyone here is going to be a good example of um, various levels of expertise and how you can bring new people into the game and experienced players into the game. So with that, let us get started. So our team of four heroes, you four have banded together for for whatever particular reason um you find yourselves in a rowboat out at sea and i believe this is because you guys have been kicked off of a larger boat where you are either serving as crew or cargo or something but here you guys find yourselves in this rickety rowboat that's barely surviving the the waves and surges that you guys are experiencing and you're approaching an island it is your only sign of safe harbor that you've seen for miles. So as you guys are approaching the rocky shores of this island, you can see that there was some kind of building that once stood upon it. And now it's a rather small piece of land. And there's beautiful white marble that's been washed gray by the sea and time. And it's crumbling into the ocean. And you can see pieces of it eroding and falling away. So you're met with silence as the waves are pushing you towards it. And with that, I think we're gonna start everybody off with an initiative roll. So I'll, so I'll bring us back to where we were. So we had just rolled initiative, which is a D20 check plus your bonus on your dexterity score. So like, for example, Grumby has a 17 dexterity, so his bonus is plus three. So he rolled this and then add three to whatever number he got. Higher is always better in this game, which is why bonuses are good. So who probably rolled the highest out of all of us? I rolled a natural 20 plus two. So that's, that's 22. right. 
Natural 20. So that means that Bazarak, our goblin, is going to set us off and we're going to go, I think, in the, I don't know if we can all see each other in the same order, but I'm going to keep us in the same order um, just by writing us down. I can rearrange the window. We stay in initiative order the whole game. We will reroll it from time to time, especially when combat happens, if that happens. But for now, we're gonna go ahead with Lauren as Bazarak leading us off. So your rowboat is drifting towards the shores of this isle. Um, what do you do? So I'm gonna assume since, you know, the elf is all about laying it back and the other goblin that's stroke is a little measly run, but I'll be the one with, you know, ro having rolled max strength of the past most likely the one using the oars. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's this thing to land we've got, so uh, I'm just gonna row the boat towards that and seek some sort of safe harbor. I'll assume someone else can actually see it because I won't be facing the bloody island. So I hope somebody else has an actual eye on things. So that's what I'm gonna do. Do I need All to, right. do I need to roll, let us say, against the tide, so to speak? Do I need to roll a particular thing called the ability check? Or something on the lights, or test as you call it. Shut up. I'm not going correct. I think in this case, because you're extremely strong and the tide's working in your favor to push you towards the island, you don't need to make any check. But you could tell me then where um where along this shoreline you would rather land. Do you want to land towards the north, the south, or somewhere in the middle? Well. Seeing as things have basically gone down south all the time in our lives so far. I think a little bit of change is in order, so I'm not gonna head north if no one else is gonna object. Particularly the one who is actually going to spot things, because as I said, I, I can't see where we're heading. I need someone <laughs> else to be my eyes on this one. We're heading towards an Oops. island. I totally just drew something I didn't mean to draw. Um, so you're heading north. I'm gonna move you guys all this away then. We'll say that you guys are able to um, get your boat sort of wedged up into this little area right here. If you guys can see it on the map due to Bazarak's powerful rowing and the ro the, the rowboat comes to rest against land clonking up against this tiny island. You guys see this big island off to your, to your left and to the right, there's a small little island of eroding ground and on it stands a statue of a woman like in white draping robes and she has a mournful look on her face and she's holding a jar that's tipped upwards and there's a stream of water coming out of the jar and just splashing directly into the ocean. Hmm. That's just the way you, all... <laughs> you can decide if plumbing. Hmm. it is, it's fantastic. It's hmm. and it looks like it's quite clear sparkling water. Um, and I'm going to let you each decide where you want to land, by the way, when you get out of the boat. So I, I just put you on the shoreline, but you can move yourself exactly where you want to be. Uh, might Ernatho be able to roll an intelligence check to see if he can recall if this kind of statue, with this kind of situation, if it rings a bell? Absolutely. So, Ernatho, let's get you to make a d20 roll and add your intelligence bonus. You got it. So well, while off. he's doing that, uh, Wibbly has been uh, quite parched through most of this journey, and so he's going to go and just like grab a quick swig. Of that water. Okay. Wibbly, you jump up on there, and as you get closer, you, you get the smell of like fresh spring water coming from it. So, you, you take a swig. <laughs> what? I, I was okay. Now, yeah, well, you do <laughs> so as Ernatho's assessing this thing and thinking, hmm, what do I know about this? We get a big swig coming from Wibbly, and Wibbly, it's it's beautiful, fresh water. Um, and you get a nice gulp of this clear, crisp spring water. Um, and then a second later, you start to feel a bit strange. So, roll me a. Let's see, what kind of check do we want to make this? Roll me a constitution check. Can it be dexterity? <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. All right, so 
here, here's the thing about making completely random characters. And, and the thing that I really, really appreciate about random characters is you take the bad and the good. By which I mean, um, Wibbly has a four in constitution, which means he has yes. a three, um, which means I just rolled an eight. An eight, okay. So you're overcome with this ravenous hunger, which is so strange, almost as if you haven't eaten in a week or two weeks. I'm starving, um, does anyone have any food? And do, does anyone have any food, by the way? Backpack. In your I backpack? Do, but I'm to share. I, I have an empty backpack. An empty backpack. So you feel compelled as if you were somebody who hadn't eaten in a week or two to, to grab at the nearest food. So whether it's food that you have or that a companion has. <laughs> Can Grumpy have food? I think Grumpy has some food. I think he has something called rations, which are like trail food. Okay. If so, I've got some rat stock in my backpack. You know, the ship itself. Speaking of rations. Grumpy, you see this happen. You see the sip of water, and then you see this sort of dark look of, of ravenous hunger come over the face of Wibbly, your companion. Now, Grumpy, because you're a, a wilderness-type person, you've seen, you've seen hunger. You recognize it immediately. What do you do? I give him... <laughs> I give him a muffin. <laughs> a muffin. <laughs> Oh yeah, because you're a baker. I knew, I knew you're gonna crack up with that. Nice. Well, yeah, because he's a he's an amateur baker. Oh. He has he has muffins um, Half in things. his bag. They love Half their things. food. <laughs> Is it a special, particular kind of muffin, like cranberry orange or uh, mushroom muffins? Like they he Ooh. took mushrooms from the the woods. It's a halfling thing. Mm-hmm. You know, Grumbly, I've always thought of you as much of a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're devouring it. that. Gotta go for it. <laughs> and then in the meantime, Ernatho, you had made that check. What did you get on your number for your intelligence check? Rolled a 15, and my intelligence is plus three, so that is an 18. Beautiful. So you have heard of this place. You know a deal about it, actually. Oh. Um, a great deal, I should say. Oh. Um you suspect that this is a place you have heard of that was once a prison palace way out in the middle of the sea where um, nobility were placed and were never heard from again. So this matches the descriptions you've read of it in some ancient tomes, although you had never heard of it being in such a poor and crumbling state. This looks like it's eroding and falling into the sea and that only a portion of the building is still left standing. Hmm. I believe this is a prison palace. Nobility were brought here once upon a time and were never heard from again. Hmm. A prison palace. Yes. The fuck is that? It is, like a, it is like a fancy prison. Ah, uh, that is the most privileged shit I've ever heard. Yes, and it I is very nice. <laughs> I have been to a few, and let me tell you, it is very nice. It's such a shame that this one was allowed to fall into ruin. Hmm. And they're, just, anyway. they're just sprinkling fresh cleaning, fresh cleaning drinking water right down in the salty depth of the ocean. That right. Mm. It's delicious. Try some. Yes, I nah. would not do that. I would not do that. No. Mm. no. And in fact, I will say that because Wibbly is so close to the water, Wibbly, you catch a weird sound of like some rattling coming from that jar that the statue is holding. It's above your head, but now that you're close enough, you detect it. Can... Is the jar like part of the statue or does it appear as though it's detachable? It looks like it's sculpted as a part of the statue. Does anyone have a hammer? What? Nah, 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 nah. Oh, sorry. My ha my brain sometimes just says completely random words. That no, 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 it's not, it's, not, it's not that. It's just, you know, uh, back in the old Eastern Goblin mines, uh, Goblin laws do not allow miners to actually use hammers. That's only for Goblin Smiths back You're right, they need new rules. As I do. Uh, does anyone have a crowbar? Does uh, anyone indeed? You guys can check your equipment list. Does anyone have a crowbar listed? Does anyone have a large blunt object? Mm. Elnato oh. is not much for blunt objects. I uh, prefer to use my wits. <laughs> <laughs> can you smack yeah, so he came on this bowl? Mm. I got a pole. With some leverage, we can do a little bit of damage. Ah, excellent. May I please borrow that pole? 
Ah, this is why I always like having goblins around. You see? It's very nice. What do you mean by that? Hmm? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Oh, just very prepared, very resourceful. You, 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 uh-huh. you, you fellows are doing a very good job. I will. I don't want to get in your way. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pull up the, the pole, and I'm going to see if this... Um, okay. We're going to need a little bit of mass, most likely. We're going to... Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm a, good, I'm, a, I'm a big gob. Could I reasonably enough, like with some little bit of leverage, um, is the is the statue itself it's mo- m- like mounted into the ground itself, it's like part of a plinth and everything else? Yeah, it looks like it's sculpted yeah. from marble, actually. It's from marble. Okay, that's gonna be a bit difficult. <sighs> right. And we um, the pole itself is made of wood, most likely. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I say it's about, oh, it's probably about two or three feet above the heads of the goblins and halfling. The only person tall enough to probably look into the to the vessel would be our our Ernatho, who I yeah. believe is human. But he's he's very heightsist. Which... Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do something different. We're going to do it the old fashioned. We're going to do a little bit of a mining trick that I picked up back today. Uh, I'm going to pull up my sword. And they, I'm going to pull up my short sword. I'm going to climb up on the statue. And I'm first of all, the first thing you do with every suspicious opening in a mine, no matter how big, you poke at it with your sword to make sure there's nothing actually stuck in there, like, you know, dastardly tentacle or something. It's what you do. So I'm gonna get in there. Okay, so our our goblin Bazarak the miner climbs, scrambles easily up the statue. It's not hard, plenty of footholds. And, um, doom, with the, with the sword right in there a few times, clang, clang, clang rattle it around good, twist it around a few times. Um, and yep. you are not met with any resistance really when you do that. It's just, it seems hollow on the inside and you hear the splish splash of water and the light rattling of some kind of object inside of there. Hmm. Um, that sounds with bad. my sword, Grab that. could I like, you know, a little bit of angling, could I like try to like, catch the object like on the tip of the plate and then carefully like pull it out? I think you could do that. I think you could, if you have a good vantage point. So you you lever the blade a tiny bit and you surface a glittering sapphire that's bobbing around inside of there. Ooh. Do you take it out? For those of y'all ever played TTRPGs before, that's what we call a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna keep it on the blade. I'm gonna hand it over to the wizard. I wizard guy mm. check this out mm. Mm. Ah, this is you, very beautiful eat. yes mm. eat us it's a thing it does this have am... any sort of bad juju on it i am not in the habit of touching magical crystals inside of everlasting spring statues i am sorry friend <laughs> i'm gonna drop the uh jewel in like in like the sleeve of his <laughs> of his shirt <laughs> just to purchase him you just Drop it in there and that there. Are you trying to jump out of the way? Is this jewel sliding towards your collar? <laughs> so just... <laughs> it just clatters to the ground. So wow. this this beautiful and you guys did notice it's like a tear shaped sapphire and it's probably about that big. It's a big, valuable looking jewel. Um sprinkled with fresh spring water. It clatters to the ground. So Grumby, you see this happening. Um, no one seems willing to touch the sapphire. What do you do? I'm willing to hold it. <laughs> You're willing to grab it? I'm willing to pick it up. I'm willing to take it with me in my backpack. Um, I had to hold on. Yeah, I'm willing to, to check it out. <laughs> so Grumby saunters up, picks I'm it up. Take... And it's a flawless sapphire. It's worth 100 gold pieces. You each gain one experience point for claiming a piece of treasure. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> Except for the wizard, who definitely didn't want it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I will take the experience. Experiences, you know, it's priceless. You know, this is exactly what we have. Um, special mining units who take care of suspiciously carved, pre-carved jewels in suspicious openings in the mines. Pre-carved would be weird in a mine, right? That would yeah. be quite weird. So... Yeah. Very good. So Grumby, Grumby picks up the gem. What about we have um, Wibbly has not done anything for a minute. What do you do, Wibbly? You're you're just you're covered in crumbs from that beautiful muffin I'm you just, just devoured. Still hungry. 
Thankfully, no. You you ate something and it seemed to have worked. Okay. Um, what do I see if I look directly west? Ooh, good question. So I'm going to reveal to you guys a room here. Um, you see, and perhaps should have shown you this sooner, you see a wide room um, that is crumbling into the ocean. It looks like it has a pair of double doors. Um, and you're hearing the hollow crash of the sea up against the the marble floors here. Um, and it's smeared with seaweed and grime that has appeared to wash up. And you see that there are six gold flecked pillars that are kind of teetering and, and drunkenly holding up the ceiling here. Um, and then there are soiled curtains of purple silk that are um, hanging in rags over, over an archway that's to the north. So I, if you can kind of see... Um, I don't know actually if you can see where I'm circling when I do this right here. Can you see my mouse moving on the screen? So there's like a ragged uh, silk hanging right here that looks like it was once maybe a um, like a door curtain. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, what do you do? Uh, well, I, my, my good compatriot here was part of the minor guild and you know, did okay where I have expertise. And truly the thing that I know more than any is the looting of rich people's places. <laughs> and I tell you, if my name's not Wibbly Sticky Wicket, but praise Memnon, whom I follow directly, there's definitely something hiding behind that silk tapestry. So someone should go check that out. Not it. <laughs> I mean, so the halfling, gonna... so brave before, surely, surely the halfling would be interested in seeing and what's behind the door. We know it has to I'll be one it. of us because tall people simply lack the courage to do anything. Ah, yes. Yeah. Loose at all. Oh, thank you for complimenting me as being tall. That is very nice of you. You are a good man. I like you. Good man? Man? <laughs> huh? I, this is a way of figure of speech. I, I know you are goblins. What well, so it sounds like our crew, our our goblin crew and Ernatho are sort of hanging back right now, looking at this curtain suspiciously. Yeah. And it once again falls on Grumpy. Grumpy, are you going to do anything to investigate? He's really worried, but uh, he wants to impress uh, the friends. So he's going to he's going to go for it. You Ooh, got it. so you're going to move up. Are you, you move up to the curtain and you see as you get closer, it's definitely hanging over some kind of open archway. Um, but oh, what's beyond it, you can't quite see. You would have to move the curtain aside. Do you want to do that? Can I look under the curtain? That's a good idea. Yes, you can. <laughs> so you scooch down very halfling style and look underneath the curtain. And I'm going to show you kind of what you see in the room beyond. Um, you see... As you glance around, actually, let me let me kind of get rid of this weird little artifact right here. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> you see in the room beyond. Um, let's see, I'm going to put you here, Grumpy. You peek in, and before you is a another open room that sort of splashed with seaweed and, and uh, detritus from the ocean. But as you kind of turn and look to the left, you see that there is an alcove. And in that alcove, there's a thin twisted tree with black branches that's bursting up out of a plot of earth. And you see hanging from the branches, these red, juicy globes of fruit that are almost glistening with um, their richness. Um, and it's just hanging off of the tree, these dozens of globes. What what do you got over there? Do you tell your friends what you see? Yeah. So I inform you guys what's going on. And I decide I want to get closer. Mm -hmm. But how I want to do this, I kind of want to move very close to the walls. So nobody can see me if somebody's in there. So I'm very close to the walls and I kind of get over to the tree to get a closer look that way. Perfect. So what we can do to represent that is let's have you make a dexterity check to see how successfully you sneak. So this is going to be right, rolling you your 20-sided die. No problem. You take your 20-sided uh, die. 
the most the one with the most sides perfect wow, right. you're gonna roll it okay. and then add your dexterity modifier which is plus three okay to your, to your number 14 plus three so that's a 17. 17 that's really good that's really good so i would say grumpy that you successfully creep your way along the wall towards this tree without causing any disturbance that you're aware of so i'm gonna put you by that tree and then i think it is time for us to get an action from ernatho we haven't had one from you in a minute um i'll jump us back into our initiative order so we'll go to an ornatho i'm next and then after that we'll come back to lauren so david what does ornatho do uh ornatho is uh exploring he's interested in this place he's fascinated his attention is focused on just analyzing everything and uh the uh doorway to the south here uh he mm-hmm. wants to uh move toward it and just poke his head through look through cool and i'll show you then what you see after looking through that door the room becomes clear to you there's another wide room um, that connects out to the sea and is crashing and crumbling into the sea. Um, but this looks like a room that is housing a bunch of old instruments. So you see this like patina caked pipe organ that's resting against the wall um, just on this side inside the door. And then over on this side, there's like a pile of old vials and, and cellos that have snap strings and they're, you know, water damaged and they're just shoved up against the wall. And anytime the sea breeze kind of rises as you're listening inside this room, you hear just the faint sort of harmonic echoing of um, instruments. Fantastic. Uh, Ernatho is even more intrigued and enters the room. Uh, and you mentioned the, the pipe organ? Mm-hmm. Uh, Ernatho would uh, like to go up to the pipe organ and... Uh, you know, just dust off the the, the keys and uh, play a little ditty. Nice. So although the pipes look like they've been rusted and they're covered in that sort of greenish um, rust that, that attaches itself to brass, mm-hmm. when you touch the keys, you hear this wheezing bellow as it comes to life and this honking sound as a tuneless noise comes out of it. Um <laughs> You feel a little bit of resistance on the keys. Are you going to try to push through the resistance, or do you leave it? Um, yeah, it's just yeah. It's, of course, it's rusted. So it's, it's an old organ. You know, just yeah. Nice. Yeah, you get a beautiful chord in, and a pearl pops out of one of the pipes. This like old kind of seaweed cover pearl, boom, and they clatters to the ground next to you at the same time that you're this loud honking sound um, that reverberates throughout this entire complex. Everybody, including Grumby up to the north, hears this tuneless honk, um, which means as the game master, I'm going to quickly check for a random encounter. You are safe for now, but now you see a pearl rolling around at your feet. (laughs) And I just, I yell back to everyone, it is okay! Fuck with that. <laughs> Just that as good. loudly as the organ, you hear it. It's okay. It is okay. It's the fuck with that. that. Digestion problems again. The island has yeah. rewarded my beautiful music. It is okay. That was I, I just I bend down and I look at the pearl. Mm. Pluck it. It seems like quite a nice pearl. Um, very sizable. Everybody gains an experience point as you guys claim another piece of treasure from this haunted place. Um, you know, this very it, place just keeps offending me on principle. First, it's a waste of water. Then it's an offense, offense to music anywhere. Do, do tall people not know what music sounds like? <laughs> I have heard. Possibly not. And I think as we, so te- we'll come to my turn as a game master. I'm doing a couple little game mastery things in the background here. Um, Ernatho, as you're looking at the pearl, you start to feel a coldness come over the room. Mm. Um, and then we're going to jump back to Bazarak, Lauren. <laughs> so you're in the main hall, and now your friends are dividing off into separate rooms, splitting the party like one does. <gasps> I'm, I'm what do you do? That's not a good thing to do. But you know what? Tall person's doing a lot of noise. 
Yeah. If a tall person is going to attract the most danger, so, so I'm go going to go way. into the exact opposite direction of that. I'm going to join the other smaller person or other, you know, actual normal sized person around here. I'm going to join the halfling. I'm going to go into that room. Careful, like. I'm going to see the tree. Suspicious, like. But them trees, them, them three fruits. I am curious. I have eaten rats on that ship for days. I need something different. So I'm going to pull up my short bow, which I have. I'm going to pull out an arrow, which I also have. I'm going to try and shoot down one of those apples, one of those fruits, Wilhelm tell like. I'm do it fancy. Beautiful. So I'd say just a, an attack roll with your short bow. Let's put it at an AC 12. A decent shot, but one that you could make. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I'll take it. It's 10 plus 3. That's a 13. Nice. Easy enough. You sever with your arrow one of the little branches holding one, and this fruit plops down onto the ground and kind of rolls slightly towards you, and it's got a beautiful glisten to it like an orange in the morning on a fine on a fine summer day. I'm going to take it. Look at it. Eat it. Hey, Wembley, want that? Want to bite? You're asking Grumpy if he wants a bite? Oh, sorry. No, I'm, I'm asking, I'm uh, asking yeah, Grumpy. I do. I'm asking oh, you're Wibbly. asking Wibbly. I misheard yeah. you. Wibbly's, so Wibbly's um, in the other room, and he it is Wibbly's turn, so. Uh, hey, Wibbly, you want a bite? I, I'm a true believer in randomness, so hang on. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, I was going to go and check out this gold shit now that all the people are gone and won't see me stealing anything, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Very uh, nice fruit looking like. I'm going to walk over, juicy. grab the fruit, and just... <laughs> Our... I'm going to watch while it, what happens. Our exploratory eater. So you come over. Um, Grumby is, is kind of hiding in the shadows watching this happen. Um, and you take the fruit and bite it. As you do that, several things happen. You hear a piercing wail emanate from the east side of the room as a strangely a mermaid kind of hauls herself onto the shore and she's reaching out and going, no. And you see that she has like bedraggled seaweed hair and she's very jaundiced looking with sunken eyes and, and looks in some way ill. And she's reaching towards you saying, no, right as you take this bite. And I think then, Wibbly, let's have you <laughs> do your best check ever. Um, actually, you know what? It's not a constitution check. Yay. It's it's a wisdom check as you bite into this fruit. It is possibly the most delicious thing you've ever tasted, especially coming off that intense hunger that you were just experiencing. Um, make me a DC 12 wisdom check. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay, so all of you guys see Wibbly kind of collapse to the ground <laughs> in a sort of euphoria. So you're in this this state oh. of like angelic warm angel angelic chords coming from on high and you feel very comfortable. And you're unconscious for a round and unfortunately you permanently lose one hit point. Uh, he's dead. So bad. <laughs> you die from this. I mean, in terms of ways you're gonna go, in like pure absolute euphoria, it's not too bad. Our first jab as oh no, Wim Wibbly of one hit point goes uh, to the know. afterlife on the wings of this delectable fruit in the uh, warm oh. embrace of angelic song. <laughs> Wibbly, it's dead. <laughs> or rather, well, normally you would be dying, but you permanently lost the only hit point that you had, so. A levitating hammer appears. In place. Memnon be praised. <laughs> so thankfully, Doc has some backup characters prepared, so we'll get one of those whipped up. Um, all of you guys see uh, Wibbly expire, and you think, that was strange. <laughs> Can his last yeah, words yeah. be, it's delicious? Yes. Those are his last words. Ah. And at the same time, the sort of mewling, howling 
mermaid is starting to drag herself towards you guys across the the ground right here um which brings us to grumby who is hidden and has witnessed a lot of things suddenly happen all at once grumby what do you do i get the hell out of there <laughs> <laughs> where do you go uh <laughs> the same way you came <laughs> The same way you came. So, um, actually, this is an interesting test of Owlbear Rodeo. Are you able to grab your token and drag it around? Uh, yes. Perfect. So, you can move maybe about like six or so squares. Um, okay. You show you show me where you want to go. Um, yeah, I just want to get out of here. I don't like the dying. <laughs> I don't like the mermaid. I just want to get out. <laughs> Perfect. I was so, planning on making some muffins with that fruit, and I am no longer interested. So, I guess here, delicious. can I go there? Uh, absolutely. So, Grumpy darts around the corner as this thing is drawing itself towards you all. Um, and Grumpy, you currently kind of have your your back to a pair of double doors that nobody has opened yet. Um, and you catch a cold breeze coming in from the south, where you know that your friend Ernatho is at the moment, and it is. Ernatho's turn. Mm -hmm. Ernatho, the shadows in the room are suddenly growing quite dark. Oh. And you feel a breeze that isn't natural starting to rise up as the cellos in the corner begin to reverberate with an unholy wailing sound. And three shadow-like creatures rise out of the, the instruments. Mm. I do not think this is a good thing. I do not like this. Uh, I shall cast uh, Mage Armor, <laughs> for sure. Excellent. So make your spell casting check, and then I think we might need to go into combat initiative, because there's a lot happening. <laughs> yes, there is. Can't believe we found the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Phantom of the mm -hmm. OK, so. Uh... Uh, I rolled a 10 plus intelligence is three. So 13. That should be enough because I think that's a tier one spell. So it, it would is. be an 11 you'd need to beat. So perfect. You are surrounded by magical armor. <laughs> <laughs> Cast beautifully and with great elegance. Um, so you're, you're protected, but you can also move if you want to. So are you going to do anything else? Um, yes. Ernatha will take a a few steps back uh just you know like I'm just going to give you some space uh <laughs> and back through the door uh don't know how many spaces how many spaces is uh allowed I'm like you could probably do about like six or so you could get to the middle of that next room that grumby's in if okay. you want to uh and i just uh you know shout back it is not okay <laughs> All right, so you're running. No, I think we're going to roll combat initiative. So we're going to reset our initiative order. If you guys remember the first time we rolled initiative, it's your 20-sided die plus your dexterity bonus. So everyone let me know who rolled who rolled the highest here. 16. Uh, 16 oh, total for me. Oh, you want me to roll plus. my new one? Three? Yes, yes. Doc, roll for your new character. Oh. Jesse, you got a three. I got a 20. No, I got 15 plus three. Oh, we got an 18 then. Okay. 18. 18. I, with my bonus, I somehow beat you all, which is very rare for the Game Master to win combat initiative. Um, who's your new character? So I can note this down, Doc. Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Wamwak. I'm a dwarven priest. Heard you guys needed some, some help around here. Perfect. <laughs> We're going to get you on the board, Wamwak. All right. All right, um, take care of you. Oh, perfect, perfect. So you you pop up out of the boat where you were a stowaway this whole time. No one somehow noticed this giant. No one saw a thing. Wolves are the best at hiding. <laughs> Can you hide in the pantry? <laughs> now we don't got any food. Uh, what uh, order should I arrange the new uh, the people in? You know what? We can leave us in order, but I'm going to yep. go first. So we'll take okay. we'll kick off from the game master. Um, okay. 
So I'm going to check to see how how upset these shadows are. I'm making what's called a reaction check. That's 2d6. And what is the charisma modifier of Ernatho? Plus three. Oh, my. He is very So charming. actually, Ernatho, you have the curiosity of these things so on their turn rather than attack you they kind of drift forward and make this spooky line you guys see three human-like shapes that are made entirely out of shadow and they're carrying this frigid cold with them that rolls off of them in waves and they're kind of hunching around the door staring curiously at ornatho um at the same time that that happens this creature this Mermaid is dragging herself across the ground toward Bazarak, the closest person. And right. she's going, Do not take the fruit, they are mine. And she scooches up to you and tries to take a swipe at your legs with her talons. Uh, so, great what is your armor class? Uh, I don't got the best armor, but it's a 13. So. 13. Let me see. Well, she rolled a three on the die, so she feebly swipes at you and you easily dodge out of the way as this seemingly bedraggled creature is is now attacking you. And that makes it Bazarak's turn to retaliate. What do you do? Uh, I mean, she's basically a fish, right? No, I've, I, I, I've, I've seen the fishes around. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna take my spear. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna go some... Uh, Looks like a fish spear in, so uh, <laughs> just jabbing it in there, back of my neck. All right, make an attack roll. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, that's another natural twenty. Oh, a critical hit! Wow. Good, you need this. So you stab her mightily with the spear. You get to roll two dice of damage instead of just one because it's a critical hit. I get to add. No, I don't get to add plus one because my longbow has plus one. Right, right. Eh, uh, that's nine. Ooh, that's still a great hit. All right, so you stab your spear into this creature, um, eliciting a, a horrible gurgling scream as this kind of bluish blood comes out of the wound. Um, and she kind of writhes on the ground in pain, but it didn't kill her. Somehow she's still alive. No ordinary person could take a blow like that, so it's a bit terrifying. Yeah, I'm moving. I'm moving. Question, though. Yes. Can I pick up the fruit that Whipley still grasping in his dead hands? Can I Absolutely. Take There's only one bite taken out of it. Yeah, I'm going to swipe that with me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to run. I'm going to run down the corridor to the others. And then I see the shadows and go, like, ah, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you run into a room where something bad is happening, holding this dripping fruit as she's howling behind you. Um, That brings us then to Grumby. Grumpy, a lot of bad things are happening around you. What are you going to do? Uh, I think I want to try to go in those doors first. Ooh, okay. Forge ahead. Get out of this situation. Um, the heavy doors in front of you um, are unlocked. If you push on them, you don't see any semblance of a lock. So are you going to go forward? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go okay. in. All right. Let me show you all what you see. You swing open these doors. Um, oh, I think this was an accidental. This might have been an accidental. I was about accidental. to say, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. Oh, yeah. A giant creature. No, that's just oh, an shit. extra extra token. Um, you come into this room, and you see that there is a great hall. And it's there are these like moldering silk pillows scattered around this uneven-looking floor. And you're, you're looking at the walls and seeing these peeling murals that depict these joyful gods with sparkling eyes kind of reveling at this big feast and it's done in this sort of um classical renaissance beautiful style but it's peeling away um and then in this same room you see now let me show you on the map it's a bit hard to see so i'm going to show you right here where i'm circling there's another door that seems to be going into another room as well as down here to the south so you see this, you can still move a bit if you want, Grumby. Is there anything else you're going to do? Uh, I want to look at the murals. I kind of want to get an idea of what's depicted on them and, and take some notes. 
Good. So you're carefully examining these murals as you come into this room. Um, some familiar gods you see. So you know of um, the seven main gods and you see each of them depicted here reveling. Um, and in particular, you knowing, who is your god, by the way? Who's your deity? Um, Gide. Gide. So you look on the wall, you see Gide depicted as this reveling um, kind of antlered and, and green cloak draped figure um, with sparkling green eyes. And as you look closer, you notice that those eyes are actually gemstones. Those are emeralds gleaming at you from the wall mural. Gide would want well, I already have the, the sapphire right in my cloak pocket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think I'm just going to try to see if I can add those in the pocket as well. Awesome. Awesome. So <laughs> you guys see Grumby disappear through these doors and then just like get drawn by treasure that becomes apparent. So <laughs> danger behind, treasure ahead, going for the treasure. Um, Grumby, show me. So you you see the Geed, the Geed um, depiction is on this north wall here. So you show me where you go. Right here. Cool. Um, roll me a dexterity check, Grumby. So roll 20 side of die and add your dexterity bonus. 18 plus uh, 3. Sorry. Ooh, beautiful. No, that's a great roll. Thank goodness. So as your foot steps on the buckling ground around you, a giant sinkhole opens up right here. You just barely managed to jump out of the way. Um, oh, where did you go, Grumby? Yeah, he, I don't know where he went. Oh, I know what happened. I see you. I'll fix it. Um, okay. There you are. Um, you manage to jump out of the way as the floor gives way and this like 20 foot shaft collapses into the sea. And you see right next to you this deep pit of like frothing cold sea water that in the water starts maybe about five feet below the edge of the pit. You could have become stuck in there if you fell in. So you jump out of the way and avoid it. Um, and you're now up against the wall mural. So I'll assume that you're going to spend the rest of your turn kind of prying that gemstone out of yeah. the wall. Okay. So that's what you're up to, Grumby. Ernatho in the other room, hmm. you have a chorus of shadows that are yes. staring at you curiously and flitting around. What do you do? Hmm. Well, first, you know, Ernatho sees people coming into the room and he's like, huh? Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It, is, uh, it is okay. It is okay. I do not think they mean us harm and <laughs> specters are always an interesting opportunity um hello friends uh, although your presence uh, may bring cold to the room it warms my heart to see you um uh, can you speak would you uh, like to parley you see them kind of gather themselves and then they all speak at the same time and each one is kind of humming a, a note and so it makes a sort of dissonant chord and that's that ah. it doesn't sound like words but it sounds mournful i understand you were inspired by my talent and i i i, I try to um harmonize with them ah. Ooh, make a charisma check <laughs> okay Okay, uh, that is going to be a, a 16 plus. Uh, that's going to be a 19. Beautiful. Ooh, take a luck token because of this interesting thing you've done. So just so everybody knows, a luck token is a thing that each character can have one of at a time. You can cash it in to re-roll a, a roll you just made, and you can give it to a friend if they need it as well. So beautifully done. You, you hypnotize the shadows with your beautiful harmonizing. It seems to resonate with their being and and they they kind of flow around and they bow to you in admiration and they seem then to sort of start to fade away and disappear mm. almost as if you have Excellent. removed a possible enemy and now they are retreating Ernatho gets along with spirits. They are good folk, really. They have nothing left to live for. So, you know, it's just, you have to appeal to what uh, eh, they, they love, what, what makes them passionate, you see? Uh, and, and this entire time I'm speaking to the dwarf that just appeared. <laughs> <laughs> 
just out of the boat, like, yes. you know, that's hey, you'll see, you'll see, this is what you must do. <laughs> Perfect. So you've managed to persuade the, the shadowy creatures um, away from hostility. And Wamwak, we kind of skipped you as you were getting situated. So let's get an action from you as you join the crew here. No worries. Uh, Wamwak comes to us from our Discord group. Uh, thank you, the Green Zap. Didn't think I'd have to go to a second character. Um, luck tokens would have been nice, by the way. Um, <laughs> Wamwak is a, a, well, he's a fighter, but he's a close follower, of course, of the god Ord. Believes in order above all. And this place is not orderly. There's like holes over there. There's like crumbling shit over there. Uh, have we ever considered just getting back in the boat? Uh, but the boat is not as nice. The, the boat is totally fine. This is not up to code. Mm. Yeah, it's not OSHA compliant at all. Mother is a mermaid, and I point back over my shoulder at the mermaid that's screaming. Uh, mermaid. Mermaid. Oh, She's like, oh, there is a mermaid. Oh, of course. Spirits, mermaids. See, it is much more interesting here. The boat is not so interesting. Can Womwak see the mermaid? Yeah, she's now starting to haul her bleeding body like towards you all through the door jam underneath that like, oh. you know, soiled purple velvet. Blessed child. I am sorry for what horrors have been brought, probably by a wizard. I hope there's no wizards here. Hate them terribly. Um, and then he's going to pull a sword out and try to dispatch the mermaid. All right. So you can move right up to her. I'm going to put her right about here, actually. Um, and you can run up to her and stab, make your attack roll, which is a 20 sided die plus your bonus to hit. Uh, it's going to be a dirty 20. That hits. Ooh. All right. Roll me some damage. Stab uh, into this crazy mermaid. Do you happen to know what the damage is on a longsword? Because I do not have that in front of me. It's a D8. A D8. Sweet. Oh, oh, she's going to get hurt. Uh, that's going to be a 7. Ooh, that is a good a good stab indeed. Um, it's you... really weird playing effective characters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not used to dealing damage. It doesn't happen to me very often. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, you hit, you hit, and you stab her pretty well too, uh, to the point that you wound her beyond half her hit points. And I'm gonna have to make a morale check to see if she changes her mind about fighting you guys. Bless you, child. Um, she actually retains her morale, so she stays in the fight. She passes the check. Um. Your grievous injury just makes her more mad, and she's like, ah, she's somehow still alive and pulls herself away from your blade. Um, do you want to do any further movement before your turn's over? Uh, in order to protect the idiots behind me, I'm going to, like, try to stay in front, in between her and them. Perfect. So, good thing you did that, because it's her turn. Um, she... She points like a clawed hand at you and goes, you pain. And you see a transformation come over her as good. Good and this mermaid-looking facade that was only a weak facade at best melts away into the horrifying visage of this sea hag, a being of tremendous, fearful aspect. So I need you to make me a charisma check to not be woefully unsettled by this. Eight. Oh no. So oh, no. this transformation just brings a horror upon you like you've never felt, you've <sighs> never seen something so awful. It's um like Blair Witch Project levels of what, so for one round, you're gonna have disadvantage on any checks or rolls that you make because of this <sighs> horrifying fear. Um, it's like a wizard. Oh. <laughs> It's like it's like the the scare the jump scare in the Lord of the Rings when Bilbo like sees oh, yes. the ring in Rivendell and uh, like turns evil like that. Yes, um, a terrifying thing to behold. And and I think that there's a good chance though that you blocked your companions behind you. So I'm I'm gonna just roll like a flat chance. I'm gonna give it like a two and six chance that everybody 
behind might have seen this. So I did roll a two, you guys. I rolled a two. So mm. I think that that means that the way she was moving, she managed to to let herself be seen past you. Um, so I'm going to have Bazarak and Ernatho. Let's have you both make charisma checks, but with advantage since you don't have a clear, full-on line of sight toward her. You That's just like catch a glimpse. That's a charisma check, right? Yep, charisma check with yep. advantage. Take the 17 minus one and take a 16. Beautiful. You are unaffected by this. You're like, ah, I've I seen worse like, in the mines. I take like a double check of her mic. She'll like, Uncle Buggles, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> and Ernatho, how did you do? Uh, 16 total. Great. So you also, you managed to like collect yourself and not be so um, stricken by the horror of the moment. Um, mm. And you are not affected as well. So you guys are safe. Um, I think in addition to that, uh, she is going to she is going to take a claw swipe as well. She got to do that that evil reveal. And um, this is the first Shadow Dark character I played that has more than one HP. So exciting! Bring, <laughs> exciting. bring it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to make an attack roll. Twenty sided die plus the bonus she has, which is plus four. What is your armor class? Eleven. Eleven. I have to get an eleven or higher on this. Ooh, I exceeded your armor class. So she she claws at you. Um, wow, this this hits hard. Uh, For six damage. No. Oh. Rakes at your throat with her long black claws. Duck. Are you still alive? Are Dude. you still up? Uh, no. Another hammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So. You begin dying. You may what? not die. You begin dying. So uh, <laughs> roll me 1d4 and add your constitution bonus. I got a two. A two. You will die in two rounds unless someone I, can... Oh, a three. Right. A three. So I'm going to keep track. You're going to die in three rounds unless somebody can administer some like first aid to you or heal you in some way. Um... This and that brings us back around to Bazarak, who's see, seen a lot of horror in the last five minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna, this is what I get for not playing Oscar. I'm going to point at the spirit. I'm going to point at the shadows. And I'm going to talk to um, the wizard and say, uh, they respond to music, right? Uh, they, they, they have rhythm in their souls, yes. All right. Um, <clears throat> it's about time someone shows them an actual good song around here. A <laughs> goblin song. <laughs> Oh no. Oh wicked spirit of the instrument. We're here to seek safety in your palace. I ask yes. you to lend a aid against this wicked hag. How do you answer? Oh spirit of the shit. And I'm gonna try to serenade the spirit with my own you actual. That greatly deserves a luck token so take a luck token for that I'll the beautiful take a luck token. and make a charisma check with advantage okay i have a minus one to charisma so i'll gladly take the advantage okay um what does a luck token do again well, let's see re-roll a roll so you could re-roll with I'm advantage i'm gonna re-roll my roll cool and you have advantage uh, on yeah i'll take the 18 minus one that's a 17. Beautiful. So you you summon a heroic ballad from somewhere deep in your little goblin soul, and these <laughs> shadows begin goblin. to rematerialize, and they're they're drawn forward. And by the time you're done singing your shanty, you see that they're kind of swaying along with the rhythm of the music. And then as the the echoing notes fade away, they whirl together and fly towards this evil creature up to the north. Um and you see them charging her so let's have actually we have uh four players let's have each one of you make an attack roll on behalf of these shadows so one of the shadows is extra beefy and is going to get in a second attack so each of you roll me a 20-sided die and then add plus three 18. 18. 15. 15 good one i also got 15. Nice. That's a hit as well. Uh, five. Alas! 
alas. Okay, so your shadow didn't didn't quite uh, get his second claw in. You can um, use the luck token. It is true. I'm gonna save it. You don't have to. I'm You're gonna, gonna save it, it. yeah, because three hits is pretty solid. So each of you who hit, roll me a d6. So I think that's everybody except David. Sorry. That's okay. This is beautiful. The the the, the melody is bringing a tear to Arnato's eye. He's he's seeing goblins in a whole new light because of Bazrak. He's moved deeply. So we've got a four and a two, and then Jesse, if you roll your ordinary six sided die for me. Um, sorry guys, I don't do this that often. But what is that nine or that's six, right? Oh, that's a, that's a six. You got a six there. That's okay. the maximum roll. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. the flurry of shadows combine together and rend this creature to pieces before your eyes. This awful being that downed your friend who just fresh off the boat there. Um, <laughs> carrying her to pieces and dragging her off into the sea. They all disappear. So well done, crew. It's just and... this like, little whisper from the the dwarf going, I could have done that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You hear this like burbling wheeze as your friend is the only sound now left in this echoing sea crashing room. Um, very well done, Bazarak. Wamwak, we're back around to, to your spot in the initiative order, so roll me a 20-sided die. If you roll 20, you rise with one hit point. You rolled a one! No oh, no! He died. You have to take a round off your death timer for that, so you're down to one. You die one round from now, unless your friends can save you. So that brings us to Grumby in the other room. Grumby, you heard all of this happen. You've now got the emerald pried out. You spent your turn doing that. Everybody gains an experience point for this. Thanks for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even though you're about to die, you get an experience point. And Grumby, so you pocket this emerald just in time to sort of hear a horrible wailing and swirling and then suddenly silence and the labored breathing of a dying person in the other room. Who you definitely don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, I haven't heard that kind of snoring, dwarven snoring sound before. Um, but I will say, now this is a time to point out that any character can try to administer first aid to another one who's down. So what you have to do is you have to get up close enough to touch them, and it's an intelligence check to try to administer first aid. So just so you all know how that works. Grumby, what, do you, what are you going to do? So... These uh, gems that I have in my pocket, do they have healing properties? You know, good question. They potentially could be magical. In this case, you you didn't get the sense that they were extraordinary or magical in any way. So they're kind of, they're valuable, but they're regular gems. Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to try to save my friend. Uh, wait, do I, I don't know this person, right? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't you them. know, you, you don't, <laughs> but... If you if you were you know to step what? into the next room, you it he is somebody who you like... saw as a crew on the ship that you guys escaped. Okay. You're like, oh, he was one of the crew. I didn't know, you know, you recognize him. Yeah, he said he, that I liked. Um, I, I he told me that. Uh, sorry, I don't know. Did he but, like uh, your muffins? I, sure. <laughs> he liked your muffins. Yeah, he liked my hat or something. Right. So that's how I know him. <laughs> Probably best thing I ever ate. <laughs> Great. So I, I have established a connection with him. So I'm going to try to save him. Okay. Perfect. So you run in, you're like, oh, that's the guy who liked my muffins. And um, you can is, run up to him. <laughs> is the metafiction here that there was just like a lump covered by a blanket the entire time they've been on this rowboat? I think so. no one so, ever just... I think you were like in the pan, like in the small store that where you like mm -hmm. usually store food mm -hmm. in the rowing boat. And you were just like four, fifth dimensionally shoved in there and then you just. <laughs> Like oh, just, yeah, that's where you like to take your naps on your break. Yeah, exactly. There you <laughs> go. No and idea the ship sank. He was just explains why all our rations are gone because he <laughs> ate all of them. <laughs> yes, you ate the rations, and the, you are the reason why the ship was probably overloaded to capacity and seemed to be sinking this whole time. So there you go. Well, that's depending on how this goes, there may be more than one reason for that. <laughs> yes. Oh no. Okay, so Grumby, Grumby runs in and attempts to save the friend dwarf here. So Grumby, you have to roll a 20-sided die and you add your intelligence bonus to this. 
I believe in you. We have some oh, luck tokens okay. on the board. So, mm -hmm. what was your total? Uh, five plus zero, so it's five. Oh no, a five. So the number that you guys have to hit is a fifteen. Mm -hmm. yep. so, so I don't know if uh, anyone wants to throw a luck for sure. I would like. To okay, throw, luck, I token, luck token. So Grumby, and I would like to uh, inspire Grumby, and just you know, like Grumby, it is okay. You can do this. I believe in you, Grumby. Oh, so make a make a um hmm, make a charisma check to give Grumby advantage. Because oh. <laughs> now I feel like I can do it now. You know, yeah. ever since uh, you're inspired. Renato said that. Uh, uh, like what do you say, before? 20 guy, right? Uh, yeah, All right, I... 14. And then plus what? Oh, Nick, minus one. <laughs> For your intelligence, 14. minus one. Oh, no, Ernesto, did you, what Wait, did no, you get on? charisma. Wait, so it, was I supposed to roll or was she? I'm confused. Oh, I'm so sorry. David, um, David, you make your, you make your charisma check and then Grumby's going to be repeating the intelligence check to... Okay. So well, we're cool. we're seeing if that's cool, I just inspires. rolled a nat twenty. So um. Oh, okay. So Grumpy, here's what happens. So Ernatho is inspiring you, right, and is trying to like get you get you invigorated. Yes. And a tear rolling down my face from the goblin ballad, you know, just like overcome with emotion. Appealing. My confidence level yes. just it's through the roof. Yeah. It is. It is. And what that means is that not only does Grumpy get to re-roll with advantage using this luck token, but I'm going to lower the difficulty class to 12, which is a normal check because of that, because of that really high roll that Ernatho just got. So Grumby, reroll, take, roll twice and take the better result because you have okay. advantage. That's what that means. First one's 15. Ooh. And two. <laughs> okay, good. Good that you had advantage. So because of the inspiration imparted and the luck imparted by Ernatho, you managed to bind the wounds of Womwak, who was bleeding out. Um, he had a bad neck wound, and you managed to get that situated and stop him from dying, which would have happened in one round. So good Thanks. work. So happy. So happy. Yeah. We did it. That's Thank you, Ernatho. I could have done it without you. Oh, oh it was an Thanks. honor to see you work. To work your trade, <laughs> both with dough and muffins, and also with the injuries of good people. You know what? Extra batch of muff muffins for you. <gasps> I'll make it for you later. They were I'm delicious. Also, quite hungry. I'll make you one too. <laughs> it's all right. Excellent. You got it. A beautiful spot. And I think what we'll do is um, my friend Brandish Gilhelm over at Runehammer, he often does a final frame when the game's wrapping up um, since we're out of time. Um, so I want to get a final comic book ending action from each of you as we close out this scene in this game today. So let's let's start with Bazarak, who's holding that piece of fruit still. What is your final frame? Holding the piece of fruit. Um, looking like I'm like I'm not, I'm like still in my previous singer pose. I'm holding up the apple, which I was just like kind of bitten in one hand, kind of still ha holding that, and I'm looking over like at the um at the doorways like like at the uh, where like where where we grumbly went in beforehand and i'm thinking there's more treasures here but there must be also more danger here we're gonna need more work songs for, for this nice. and i'm preparing the next note of the next working song <clears throat> beautiful beautiful so okay let's go over grumby what is your final her, like comic book ending moment as you just saved your friend what is the last thing you do before we end the game uh you know the um in super mario 64 when mario gets a star and he, he kind of spins and he goes like this <laughs> uh, he's gonna do that and um and there's gonna be like a magical like flower that he bakes with that goes around him like this. And, um, he does yeah, a beautiful I... display using flour as like a confetti, you know, yeah. a spin. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. You guys all hear the Mario song somehow playing in the background mm -hmm. as this happens, the like star song. Beautiful end to your to your scene here, Grumpy. So Ernatho, what is your final frame? Uh Hmm. Okay, so uh, he like is 
can it, is it okay, Bazrak, if Ernatho just gives you a quick side hug while he takes a bite out of the delicious muffin with like a tear coming down his face? You will have to bend down very low to yes. catch my yeah, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, sure. I'll stand by heroically with the apple in the hand still and you are biting the muffin. Yeah. A, a, a scene of camaraderie. Beautiful muffin biting a tear. Lovely. And then our final Womwack, who just a minute ago was dying, but now is back amongst the living. What is your final frame? Womwack is going to stand up and be so overcome with emotion. He's going to grab Grumby and drag Grumby over to uh, whatever their names are. Uh, <laughs> just kind of heard it in the background. You all, I... I have learned now of the importance of teamwork and I just feel we can all make it through this together. And then he's going to grab the apple and take a bite of it. <laughs> <laughs> End scene. Thank you. Fade to black. Yeah, like that's a beautiful <laughs> ending <laughs> team. I love that our, I love that our invention and the hammer. Yes. I think Doc is like I had to die one more time before the end of this. <laughs> I, I had to keep it going. Yeah, you got it. It's, it's tradition the now. Hammer. Absolutely beautiful. You guys, thank you so much. We got we got through about half of the eroding Isle of the Executioner, um, which is an adventure that's coming out with the Shadow Dark Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate you all playing. I had a lot of fun. And thank you so much. Uh, let's do a final thing, because I want to get everybody a chance to to follow along with those of you who are creatives and hear about your projects. So um, Lauren, starting with you, do you want to just give a quick th shout out where to find you, what you're working on? Uh, yes. Um, hi, I do third party creations for Shadow Dark RPG right now. My main contribution to the entire community is Soul Blight, which is, I think, the first setting for Shadow Dark, uh, at least third party wise. Uh, there's Champions of the Foreign Art, which introduces much more new classes. Uh, there's uh, Blades, Guts, and Glory, which introduces Hirelings and Henchmen, a road bat. And there's going to be a lot of new additions to Soul Blood as the setting itself uh, through the various guest ideas and through the next expansions. So get ready for that. The next one's going to be Vagrants and Vagabonds, which introduces more classes to Shadow Dark. So you can find me there. I'll be on, I'm on drive through and I'm on Twitter as well. If you really, if you really want to go into that cesspit, you can. I'm that occult DM there. You can find me there. That's where you can find me. And of course, in the beautiful Arcane Library chat, where you have to pay with your faces because that is the toll that Kelsey demands. And I'm sorry, we demands have rules. <laughs> Except souls or faces as payment for entries. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. Well, Jesse. Um, we kind of tend to work together on projects. So what is what is your current situation? What are you doing? Yeah, so I guess I'm second in command to the uh, Arcane Library. And um, I do all the art direction and marketing. And uh, I make us food, which is good. <laughs> and <Yes>. uh, <laughs> There's a lot of, and, Kelsey, did you eat lunch? And then I'm like, oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> if I leave Kelsey... She'll have two pieces of bread with peanut butter on it. And we don't do that, not where I'm from. So I make her some some really nice food, so. Thank you. <laughs> yes, the real reason the Arcane Library lives is because my wife feeds me and helps me with everything in the background. So thank you so much. All right, all right. And then David, give us your story. What are you working on? Where can we find you? Uh, you can, if you wanna check out my work, uh, David W.S. Dot com, very simple. Uh, and uh, yeah, I most recently uh, made the uh, Shadow Dark Kickstarter trailer. Uh, and uh, I'm a freelance designer, so I work on animations, websites, sound design, all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah, the, the the other stuff I do pales in comparison to how cool Shadow Dark is. So I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> Well, Shadow Dark has benefited immensely from your playtesting, your voice acting, your video skills, all of that. So thank you so much for being a part of it. It's an honor. And that's so let's let's hear our last player here, Doc. Where can we find you? What are you up to? Uh, I'm up to a lot of things. So um, I were or 
I was gonna say I work as a moderator on uh, Kelsey's Discord channel. You can get into the Discord channel by going, I believe the link is still on Kelsey's website. Um, by all means, feel free to show up. Uh, we're a very friendly community. Um, I, I like to think we've done a real, a lot of ton of work to make it that way. Um, as Lauren said, you can find him there as well under Laura Tathman, David as DWS. Um, I'm just at Doc. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Dowhawk, D-A-U-H-A-W-K. Um, I do freelance proofreading and copy editing uh, in my spare free time. Um, I also play a lot of games. I'm the inventor and uh, DM of the Shadow Dome, which is currently on hiatus, but uh, will come back at some point. Um, and you can also find me at GaryCon along with Kelsey. I'll be there on the 24th of March through and the 25th, um, running Shadow Dark games uh, at the little kids table uh, next to uh, Kelsey. So if you if you can't play a game with her or you're trying to get a hold of her and she's impossible to get a hold of as she often is uh just feel free to <laughs> send me a message on discord or twitter and i'll see what i can do uh, awesome i also like coffee coffee we yes the the fuel of all things Indeed. we all need that so thank you fam. Well, you all thank you again so much for playing and i hope people have as much fun watching this as i i believe we did playing it and we will we'll all see each other soon yeah Peace. all right